Hey everyone, today I'm going to be doing a short video on high altitude balloon flight planning. Now there's several different websites I want to show and how to use each one. There's a lot of different factors that get taken into consideration with planning a balloon flight. This is Astra High Altitude Balloon Flight Planner. This is a fantastic website. I'll go through all the details here over the course of this video. The first thing we want to do is select the launch date and time. I'm just going to run this for tomorrow, May 19th. Now when selecting a date and time, I think windy.com is going to be a great tool for getting an idea of what to expect. This website shows the wind speed and direction, but it will also show the wind speed and direction at various altitudes. So I'm, I'm running the simulation for tomorrow at noon, so I'll come down here select tomorrow noon and this is the wind at the surface level but as we start to go up we'll see the changes in the wind speed this is uh, 20,000 feet 25,000 feet etc and we can see that it would carry the balloon southward so that looks like it might be pretty good we'll get a little bit higher here it's going to carry it east it looks like looks like this might actually be a pretty good day to do a balloon flight, but I don't think surface weather is going to cooperate, and I'm not quite ready to do it just yet. But this is all looking good. So next, we're going to set our parameters here. We're going to use helium, balloon model. I'll be using a 1500 gram balloon. And then we're going to choose the parachute size. I'm going to be using a five foot rocket man parachute. Payload weight, we're coming in at about 1700 grams. It does say kilograms, I've made that mistake numerous times. So it's 1.7 kilograms. Nozzle lift. This is the amount of force that the balloon is going to be pulling on the payload. So for that, we're going to be using um, Hab Hub burst calculator. We enter the payload mass, the balloon mass, and you can enter either the target burst altitude or the target ascent rate. I'm going to go off of the ascent rate because I want it to go as high as I can. And that gives us some numbers down here. We've got an estimated burst altitude, ascent rate, time to burst, neck lift right here. That's what the flight planner is looking for. This also shows how much helium to use. So to get 4.5 meters per second ascent rate, we would need to use 142.9 cubic feet of helium. So we're gonna take this number here, 2.655. That's our nozzle lift. Train equivalent sphere diameter, we're gonna put 0 0.3 in there. Launch site is next, so we can pick on the map. I've already selected a site over here approximately where I plan on doing it. Then we're going to select our weather data and simulation settings. We can run up to 400 different simulations at once. For the first run, I like to do one. So let's go ahead and run the simulation. It does take a little bit of time to run that. So while that's happening, let's go over to the aviation map. This is important when selecting a launch site, but also when looking at where it might land. I've selected my site approximately right here. We're outside of Class D airspace, and we're outside of the flight path right here. It's outside of city limits, and we're away from any of these major towers and wind turbines. You can see those out here. That'll be more important when we start looking at landing locations. So let's... Let's see if this is done here. There we go. And that's going to carry us north. Oh, that looks great. But we can see here that we're looking at it reaching 36,000 meters. It's going to land approximately right here after 2 hours, 14 minutes, and 57 seconds. It's not 100% accurate, but... I know this works well. There's other 
companies that have used this for planning balloon flights, and I do trust it. Now, this is what makes this website fantastic. I'm going to run 400 simulations, and they give this warning down here saying it could take up to 40 minutes to complete. Not my experience, but it does take a bit, so I'm going to speed this up, and I'll be right back. All right, so the simulations have completed, and what this has done is, is it's given us the top 400 likely scenarios of where the balloon's going to travel. We can see all of the plots on here, and these are the bursts. These are all the landing sites. We can zoom in here and get a close look at all those, but that doesn't really mean much. What makes this great is we can go over here to View Options and display the landing site as a heat map. And that shows the most likely landing sites. And we can go over to the aviation maps. That's right up here. Whoops. Yeah, about right there. That's the projected landing site. This would be by far the best simulation I've run with this. This is a very ideal scenario for the balloon flight. We can also take that information, export as a CSV or a KML file for Google Earth, so we can um, get a better view of it, run some analysis on the data of the flight path. If we go to the CSV file here, we get a zip file. That's going to take a minute to download. We get an Excel file here. There we go. And this gives a almost minute by minute projection of what's going to happen. And we can see that after, what is this, 30 minutes? We're at an altitude of 573 feet after Maybe that's seconds. That's probably seconds. But we get a lot of data. We get this for all 400 of the simulations. So this can be used for planning as well. I will put links to all of these sites in the description below. This is actually going to be the last of my videos in the balloon series. Next time I do a video on the balloon project will probably be the launch day, so make sure you subscribe. It's probably going to be a couple weeks, probably about a month. I'm thinking end of June would probably be the ideal time frame. I'm going to run simulations with all of this over the next few weeks and find the best date and time and place, and it's going to be great. Going forward, I am going to be doing videos on the fireworks project. I'll probably be doing three or four videos on that detailing how to set off fireworks with your Raspberry Pi. I'm also going to be exploring various operating systems. I know a lot of people have been talking about uh, putting Windows on their Raspberry Pi, believe it or not. I don't know why people want Windows on there, but whatever. If you want to know how to put Windows on their Pi, well, I will show you how to do that. I'm going to be talking about RetroPie. That's a very popular operating system gaming platform for the Raspberry Pi. So those will be some of my next videos. Um, until then, make sure you subscribe. I'd like to read your comments below. And stay tuned on Facebook. I will keep you updated on the Balloon Project and potential launch dates. Thanks.